Thank you, Clint. Uh, good evening. Welcome to Astrology Night here at Soul Food. Rick and I Soul are Food doing Books this. in Redmond, Washington. That's right, for the home viewers. Um, for those of you who are new, what Rick and I are going to do is talk about the collective astrological patterns for the month of uh, for the month of May. This is the cosmic weather, the sea in which we all swim. And after doing that, we're going to take a short break. And then we'll do a little bit of individual astrology. If you would like us to look at your chart for a little five-minute mini-reading, put at least your first name and your birth data, which is time, date, and place of birth, on a piece of paper, toss it up here on this table somewhere, and during the break we'll do a drawing, and three of you will be used as examples. And for those of you who are watching either on YouTube or on the live streaming, this event occurs on the first Wednesday night of every month here at Soul Food Books in Redmond, 7 o'clock, admission is free. All right, so let's talk about the month. Wait a minute. Oh my God, what a month. Really? Well, just a couple of eclipses, uh, Cataclysmon Part 3 of 7, and a bunch of planets in Taurus, which means we don't want to change anything, but I think we we'll have to. Ever. Ever. Yeah. But we have to now. Right. Well, the reasons are, we begin the month with planets in Taurus, and it's always fun for us when the first Wednesday of the month uh, falls on the That's first. right. We begin the month with the first day of the month. How unusual is that? And it happens only one out of every seven times. It's May Day, Beltane, Brigands Day. It's, this, is the, this is really the first day of summer, not in our calendar, yeah. but of in the summer? ancient... In the ancient calendars, yes. the cross quarters began the new season. And so that this is actually the transition from spring into summer. No, no, it, it is true. They it's weren't a very bright. It's the beginning of <laughs> I mean, really. It's the height of spring, it's, yeah. but it's like the beginning of summer. No, no, it, it, it's true. And today is the celebration. The light is returning at, it, literally as fast as it ever does in the northern hemisphere. So w what we have today to kick off this month is a whole, um, what's the um, slew, a, slew, a, a plethora, um, a cluster of planets. That's no second word on wow. cluster. Um, Mercury, Mars, the Sun, this is the Moon's node, and the south node of the Moon, and Venus are all clustered in Taurus, and as Jeff said, Taurus is a sign that likes to maintain the status quo. Um, I always think of Taurus as Newton's second law of inertia, which basically says that an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted on by an outside force. But there's a second part of that which is actually just as important to Taurus, and that is an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. Tor Taurus is inertia. Whatever it's doing, if it's nothing, preferably, then that's what it wants to continue doing. But once it gets started, once it has a goal in mind, once it's heading somewhere, it's like the cows coming back to the barn in the evening. Just try to stop them. They're going to get to where they're going, not because they're clever, but because they're determined. See, I thought you were talking about... Newton's law of fig newtons, which if you're a Taurus, you have to eat the whole box. That's what I thought you meant. But very good, Jess. But I, I think your use of of physics is very helpful in terms of understanding how the sign Taurus works, and we also deepen our understanding of it by thinking about where it came from. That's right, which was the starting, the initiation, the impulse without caring where it's going or what happens next or where it's, or if it's going to get there. Right, which was the previous sign, Aries, the first sign of the zodiac, with all of that spontaneity and immediacy that every beginning of the astrological year is about. And a healthy expression of Taurus is to find comfort within oneself. I mean, I'm a Taurus, so I'm licensed to say, as I often do, that Taurus is a sign of fat, dumb, and happy. Because it is really about the contented cow. Which you're none of. Uh, well, but I'm working on all of them. 
I'm working on I'm working on all of them. But the the idea is that Taurus is about accepting things as they are. It's a bit of the Garden of Eden sign, which says, I'm where things are sweet and sensual and fine. That's why Taurus doesn't want to go anywhere. However, we know that life has motion in it during Taurus as well as the rest of the year. And this month, I think that those oxen who don't want to move are going to be gored. Yeah, I, I agree. And, I, and, and since you brought up this whole idea of Taurus um, and the Fig Newtons, um, let's remember that in astrology, every sign connects with a planet and every planet connects with a sign. So the planet that connects with Taurus is Venus. And Venus is the, the planet of fulfilling the senses and having pleasure. Whether it's touch or taste or, 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 or the feel of nice sheets and linens and, I mean, uh, Taurus is very security conscious in as much as there are things that we can perceive that make us feel good. Now, since Jeff talked about, we both talked about how these planets in Taurus are coming out of Aries, the switch is, remember Aries, the planet is Mars, and Mars has directionality. Mars is always going somewhere. Mars has the arrow on it. Mars, Mars has a, it, it has force heading towards somewhere. So that which is created by the force of Mars needs to take substance and, and, and hold on to its position in a way this time of year, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, those things which began to germinate or grow um, out of the seed, which is Aries. You look at something coming up out of the ground, you can't tell whether it's a piece of grass or an oak tree. It's just green coming up out of the ground. But as we move into Taurus, what happens is things get substance. The new growth turns into wood, and it, begets, and, and it gets stronger so it can stay. And there's a whole connection, I think, between Taurus and, and, and the wood um, that grows, and there's even a connection of building things um, often that we go to Taurus, because it's of substance. It's not just the energy of new growth. Yeah, and as you can see, there are one, two, three, four planets and the moon south node, as Rick mentioned earlier, in the sign of Taurus. However, while we normally would perhaps spend a bit more time recommending the self-indulgent, self-satisfying recognition of one's own fundamental worth that we associate with Taurus, this is a kind of different experience. Whereas Taurus generally is good at grazing, find us a nice field of grass and it's we'll... Ferdinand the bull, right. like, you know, you know smelling so the flowers we, and taking it in. So we will normally linger but I believe, because of things that we're going to describe in a little bit, that if we linger in our favorite places of self-indulgence, that not only may we come up short on satisfaction and fulfillment, but we may also find that it's not going to work as well as it had in the past. And the reason is, is that we're in eclipse season. We are in eclipse season because we had an eclipse, you know, a week and a half ago or a week ago, and we have another one coming up, and then a third one coming up um, later on in May. But before we get to eclipses, I just want to mention that all these planets in air uh, in Taurus are, in some ways, I mean, the fr it's it's about what you were saying because Saturn, the planet of of holding back, the planet of, um, uh, uh, of the taskmaster, the planet of saying you have to, even if the Taurus is saying I don't want to do nothing. Saturn is opposite all these planets. Now granted, most of them are already past the opposition point, seven degrees, but today Mars, we start the month off with Mars opposite Saturn, and, the, and this is that dilemma between Going, going, get going, start, fire, feistiness, gas pedal, and Saturn, the break, whoa, slow down, stop. And so right away, we, we're, the month opens with this dilemma that in some way becomes an ongoing issue for, for a lot of the month. Yeah, very much so. And, and I know that Rick and I, like many astrologers, talk about planetary patterns 
as if we're going to experience them on the exact day that they occur. Mars, the planet of go, as Rick said, opposed Saturn, the planet of stop, early today. That, according to traditional astrology, is, is daunting. It's frustrating. Frustrating. It, yet, events indicate, I think, that the Mars-Saturn opposition had been triggered at least a week and a half ago because we had a full moon lunar eclipse on the 24th of April in which Mars was next to the Sun and Saturn was next to the Moon. It, it's up there right now. And even though Mars and Saturn were not exactly opposite one another, that, that full moon eclipse sort of triggered their relationship and certainly the most overt expression that we, that we saw of this was the explosion at the finish line of the Boston Marathon because Mars and Saturn are both very physical. When we talk about astrology, we talk about symbols, we talk about metaphor, we talk about psyche and spirit. Mars and Saturn, particularly with Mars in earthy Taurus, right. and Saturn in Scorpio, the kinds of issues and crises I think that we're likely to encounter tend to be more physical than philosophical. Yeah, I think that's a good point, and I think that, that that really does set up what's going on. I know I had several interactions with people today who described experiences in the last few days and today of you know going out and their car didn't start, the battery was dead, or um, it, things that were just, they were already had a whole list of things they wanted to do, they got up and something happened and they couldn't do it. Now, again, this is the difference between the weather and how we respond to it, because someone else might have all their ducks so well in order that when they encounter this, they just plow through things at a very steady pace, one at a time, and maybe get a lot done. Remember, these aspects or these patterns in themselves are neither, are neither good nor bad. They're sometimes easy or difficult. And this is a bit difficult because of the conflict between the red hot and the ice cold, between the assertion and the, and the restriction. And so that's where we start. Yeah, I, I think uh, another way to look at, not just the opposition today of Mars opposite Saturn, which really is in effect for at least a week coming and going, but the whole Taurus-Scorpio axis. Scorpio right. is the sign opposite Taurus. And we talked early on about the simplicity of Taurus and the comfort-seeking nature of Taurus. And because of that, we don't think of Taurus as particularly ambitious. There are certainly individual Taurians who can be extremely ambitious. But the fundamental nature of the sign is, I don't want to go too far from home base. I don't want to find what works and not look beyond that. Well, Scorpio is not interested in what's adequate. Scorpio is interested in all or nothing. It's much more extreme. It goes deeper. It demands more. It's more complex. It's more frequently dissatisfied. If Taurus is a sign of satisfaction, Scorpio could be called a sign of dissatisfaction, but dissatisfaction in the sense of hunger for more, for deeper. And I think this opposition of Mars and Saturn that we're opening the month with is particularly frustrating in those situations where we're settling for adequate. Because Saturn in Scorpio says, who cares about adequate? Your comfort, our comfort, is not as important as deepening our life experiences, maximizing our capacities, and being more dynamic in terms of our relationship to the world.